The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. you like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is Parquet. Parquet Margarine, P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. It's Saturday night, and for the first time in weeks, Gildersleeve has spent an evening in the company of his boon companions at the Jolly Boys Club up over Floyd Munson's barber shop. Oh, it's always fair weather when good fellows get together with a sign on the table. <laughs> Not bad. Chief, I should like to take this opportunity to congratulate you personally on that last note you sang. That was a pit. Oh, 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 oh it was nothing. With a stein uh, of... Don't spoil it, Chief. Don't spoil it. There is a tavern in the town, in the town, and there my... Uh, uh, hold it, Peavy. It. Hold it. Hold it, Peavy. I'd like to say at this time, gentlemen, well, you're probably going to think I'm being sentimental when I say this, but I should just like to say at this time... There is a tavern in the town, in the Hold town... Hold it, Peavy. Hold it, Peavy. The commissioner. The commissioner. Now, go ahead. I, I don't really want to make a speech at this time, but I should just like to say at this time, I should just like to say that I don't know where there's a, a finer bunch of fellows anywhere than right here. And that goes for anywhere. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Likewise. Mm -hmm. I think it calls for a song. Yeah, a song. Uh, Peavy had one he was trying to sing there. How about it, Peavy? Tavern in the town? Mm, I'm afraid I'm out of the mood right now, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> hey, I got one, I got one. Let me at the piano there, Chief. Oh, I've got one. Well, just one, gentlemen, then I've got to be going. Okay, just one. Here's one for Gildersleeve, the great lover. Oh, now, fellas. I love you as I never loved before. Oh, cut it out, Since first I met you on the village green. Come on, Gildy, be a sport. Come to me, or my dream of love is o'er. I love you, and I love you when you are Peavy's bedtime. Home, James. Yeah, good night, all. Good night, Peavy. Good night, Peavy. Be careful going home now. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Yeah, don't take any wooden nickels. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night, good night, good night Peavy. Good night, Peavy. What's that? 
Who? Oh, telephone. <laughs> hey, hey, that's the telephone. <laughs> Darn it, where's the light switch? Oh, oh, my big toe. All right, can't you hear me coming? Heck with the light. Yeah. Where's the stairs? Here. Where's the stairs? Gotta be careful now. Gotta be careful. It's me, Uncle. Uncle, what happened? I touched Leroy. Leroy, what are you doing up? Turn on a light, somebody. Just don't stand around. There, Uncle. Turn it off. It's blinding me. Okay. No, no. Turn it on. How can I see in the dark? You want me to break my neck? All right, all right. Uncle Mark, the phone's ringing. You're telling me. Who the devil could be calling at this ungodly hour? If that's the wrong number, they can just take that phone out of here, that's all. They can just take it right out of here. Darn phone company call you up in the middle of the night and tell you it's the wrong number. Hello? Uh, is this Summerfield 8126? Yes, this is Summerfield 8126. Is this Mr. Gildersleeve? Yes, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Who is it? Who is it? How is Will it? Will you shut up so I can find out? It, pardon me, who's calling? Uh, this is Mrs. Peavy. Who is it, Leroy? Who's calling? Shut up, will you, so we can find Be out. Be quiet, all of you. How can I hear? How can I hear? Quiet. quiet. You too. He says you too. Now, what was that name again? I didn't get it. It's Mrs. Peavy. Mrs. Peavy. Mrs. P. Mrs. Peavy. It's Mrs. Peavy. Shh. Yes, Mrs. Peavy. Well, I'm sorry to well, disturb you, but it's not. Quiet. Quiet. How can he hear? How can he hear? Pardon me. <laughs> A little interference here. Will you repeat that last, Mrs. Peavy? I'm afraid I didn't get it. I say, is Richard there? Richard? Oh, you mean Mr. Peavy? Why, no, he's not, Mrs. Peavy. I left him at the Jolly Boys Club. It must have been three hours ago. Or rather, he left us. Well, I don't know what to do. He hasn't come home. Hasn't come home? Mr. Peavy hasn't come home. He hasn't come home, Bertie. My land. Well, Mrs. Peavy, I... I just don't know what to do. Richard's always home by 11. Well, uh, have you called the police? No, I haven't. I didn't know what to do. Richard's always home by 11. I don't know what to think. Uh, Mrs. Peavy, you know what I think? I think he's missing. Oh, dear. Richard's always home by 11. Now, don't you worry, Mrs. Peavy. You just leave everything to me. I'll call the police. This is a job for the Missing Persons Bureau. You mean the Homicide Squad? I mean the Homicide Squad. No, I don't. I mean the Missing Persons. Well, anyway, they're all the police. So don't you worry, Mrs. Peavy, and don't get excited. You just go back to your little bed and keep calm. We'll find your husband for you if we have to drag the reservoir. There they are. It's him. Let me, let me. Stand back, both of you. Well, Chief, it's about Leela. Throckmorton, is anything wrong? I saw all the lights on, I and thought I... you were the chief of police. Well, I thought I heard a sound, and I saw all the lights on over here, but when I tried to phone, the line was busy, so I threw on my coat. Come in I... quickly, Leela, quickly. Why? Yeah, better lock it, I guess. Hi, Mrs. Ransom. Guess what happened? Leroy. What? Mr. Peavy has disappeared. Marjorie. What? I wanted to tell her. Now, go upstairs, both of you children. Go on back to bed. Oh, can't we just stay down? It's three o'clock in the morning. No time to be running around the house in your bare feet. Now, do as I say. Come on, Marge. Make her come, on. Not coming. Nice. We miss all the fun. Well, Strock, Marge, and tell me, what in the world? Now, don't get alarmed, Leela. There's nothing to be alarmed about, you understand? There's nothing to be alarmed about. Is that a gun you're carrying? It's no water pistol, I'll tell you that. Well... Couldn't you put it on the mantle or someplace? Don't worry. I know how to handle it, Leela. I'm a deputy, you know. Well, tell me now. It's something about Mr. Peavy? I don't want to alarm you, Leela, but I'm afraid there's been foul play. Oh! Peavy has disappeared. How perfectly terrible. But who would ever... A sweet old thing like Mr. Peavy. Oh, I just think that's terrible. And... You don't suppose he could have fallen down somewhere and sprained his ankle? Oh, anything could have happened. What's worse, the police, as usual, have proved themselves completely incompetent. Oh, dear. I called the chief two hours ago and told him to get right over here, and he's not here yet. 
So I've taken over. Mm -hmm. I phoned Floyd Munson and told him to round up all the other deputies. And when they get here, we'll form a searching party. You mean you're going out looking for him in the dark? Well, I think one of us ought to stay here so the others can report back. Oh, Throckmorton, you're so brave. <laughs> oh, I declare I'm glad I'm not all alone over there at my house with things like this going on. I'll look out for you, Leela. Sit down. Uh, don't you want to take off your fur coat? Gracious, no. All I've got on under this is my nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw on the first thing that I could find. Uh, that's them. Uh, if it's people, I'd better hide. Uh, no reason to hide. Just keep your coat on. <laughs> well, Judge Floyd, come in, fellas. Mr. Slee, for heaven's sake, put that gun down. You're a menace to the community. It just so happens, Judge, that I have a permit for this gun. Well, stop waving it around. Well, hiya, Mrs. Ransom. How's it going? Leela, this is an unexpected pleasure. I just this minute arrived. Yes, yeah, she just this minute arrived. I saw the lights on over here, and I was afraid it might be appendicitis or something, so I just ran over. Yes, yeah, she just ran over. Hey, what's this about the peas? Yeah, Floyd tells it's me It's all that... true, fellas. His wife called me about 1 or 1.30 and asked if he was here. Well, you know, we said goodnight to him about 10.30 or quarter to 11. Ah, he probably just laid down someplace and took himself a little nap. Yeah. Not Peavy. He goes straight home. Gildy's right. If it had been anybody else. But Peavy. Well, what I did, right away I called the chief. I told him to get himself right over here. That was two hours ago. Now, I don't like to say this, but this is typical. The chief is dead on his feet, him and his whole department. That's why I called you fellas. What we've got to do is throw out a dragnet. Comb every nook and cranny. We ain't going to get very far with a three-man dragnet. Aren't there any others coming? Judge is the only one I could raise. What a town. Well, who's that? I'll go see. Well, Chief, it's about time. Do come in. Hmm. Hiya, Chief. What kept you? Chief? Uh, what's this, a party? I just this minute got here. Mrs. Ransom, where? I just this minute got here. A fine bunch of deputies you've got, Chief. These two are the only ones I get hold of. Suppose there was a real emergency. Suppose... Now, just a minute, Commissioner. Who authorized you to go calling out the deputies? Who authorized me? Nobody. But it's a lucky thing there's somebody in this town who's got a little gumption, I'll tell you that. We had to depend on the police department why there'd, there'd be burglars running wild all over the place. Commissioner... You just handle your department, and I'll handle mine. Well, handle it. Go ahead. Handle it. Let me see you. Okay. For heaven's sake, you'd think it had all night. A man is missing, Chief. His wife is tearing her hair. Do something. Get on the ball. It's two hours since I called you up and told you to get over here. Commissioner, when a man is missing, we don't go tearing off after the first loudmouth that begins to hoop and holler. Hoop. That is not our method. No. When a man is missing, we go to his home first and look under his pillow. Under his pillow? What for? This. Uh, what's that? A note from TV. Read it. Uh, the mortgage is in the safe deposit box. The key to the safe deposit box is in the safe. The combination to the safe is in my handkerchief drawer. Don't forget to water the rubber plant, Richard. How do you like that? Just blue town. The old son of a gun. Well, he's more of a man than any of us. More from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Right now, I'd like to say a few words about parquet margarine made by Kraft. The most delicious, the most tasty, the smoothest... Oh, uh, just a second, friend. May I interrupt? Well, uh... As a regular listener, I should have something to say about these commercials. They should be factual, brief, and sensible. Now, go ahead. Well, I was about to say that parquet margarine is a delicious spread for bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles. Yeah, now you're getting somewhere. Parquet margarine is made from top quality ingredients. Now, wait, wait. What do you mean by that? I mean that parquet is made from choice products of American farms, the finest farms in the world. Why, parquet is the most delicious, the most satisfying. Oh, now, hold it, son. Don't get carried away. 
You're talking to adults, so just stick to plain fact. How about this fact? Parquet margarine made by Kraft contains 15,000 units of vitamin A per pound all year round. Now, that's worth knowing. And to sum it all up, every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Check. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. <laughs> Now let's get back to Summerfield, which is simply buzzing. The proprietor of Peavy's Pharmacy has disappeared. The whole town's talking, and the Jolly Boys have been called an extraordinary session. All right, gentlemen, let's come to order, shall we? Yeah, let's get going. Oh, I miss you, dear old... You wouldn't want everybody singing if you were gone. Gosh, I didn't mean anything by it. Just got to thinking about the peeve, and I thought of the song. I miss old peeve. It's simply a question of good taste, Floyd. I keep asking myself, why did he do it? He had everything to live for. He probably had his reasons. Can we get started now? It's 7.20. Gentlemen, we have called this special meeting of the Jolly Boys Club to take up the question of one of our members who is uh, absent. I refer to Brother Peavy. You haven't said anything we don't all know, Judge. Let's get down to brass tacks. I'm sorry if we've wasted a few seconds of your valuable time, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, nobody wants to hear you blowing off all night. Let's get Fellas. down... Fellas! Let's not act like this. <laughs> Peavy's gone. The rest of us have got to stick together. The Chief is right. You're right, Chief. Well, the point is, Peavy is gone. Now... What are we going to do about it? What the heck can we do? When a fellow's gone, he's gone. Peavy knew what he was doing. Ah, but did he? That's one of the questions which we, his friends, might well ponder. What are you talking about, ponder? I'm referring to the possibility of temporary insanity or amnesia. Loss of memory, Floyd. Perhaps he... Oh, horse collar. He left a note. He remembered where everything was. He told his wife. Sure, he had no more amnesia than I have. He may be still right here in town, for all we know. We found out a little more than that, Commissioner. The department's been investigating. Now, what's new, Chief? You've been holding out. Well, we know Peavy was seen at the depot about 11.45 that night. And we know there's an 11.55 train southbound. And since he wasn't seen again... Ah, I think we may conclude he went south. I think so. Well, so he went south. What of it? It narrows our search a little, Commissioner. Hey, wait a minute. Did he buy a ticket? No, you don't need one. Then how do you know he got on the 1155? There's another train at 1202 goes north. I didn't know there was a 1202. Has been for three months. I sent my mother-in-law home on it in April. <laughs> she was with us for Easter. Well, in that case... I, I must say, Chief, as a detective, you're about as smart as fearless Fosdick. Mr. Gildersleeve, I would like to point out to you that the department has made no official investigation of this matter. Why not, for heaven's sake? Because we've had no official complaint, that's why. That's no excuse for just sitting around. Peavy was your friend, wasn't he? It just so happens that the law's... Uh... Tell him, will you, Judge? The chief is right, Gildy. The law... Oh, the law makes me sick. Between cops and judges, I don't know how any of us can sleep in our beds at night. Inactivity. And you always back each other up. One hand washes the other. Well... Mr. Gildersleeve, I refuse to lose my temper. But I don't criticize your department. Not that I couldn't, either. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's remember why we're here. Well, why are we? You called this meeting. I thought it was for poker. We're here because a fellow jolly boy has gone into the silences. North or south, east or west, he is gone. We have a duty. We have an obligation to his wife, to Mrs. Peavy. Why should we butt in? What are we supposed to do? I think we should call on Mrs. Peavy in a body and express our regrets as a club and simply put ourselves at her disposal in any way. Sounds crazy to me, but if that's what clubs do, let's do it. I want to do the right thing. We owe it to him, fellows. He, he'd appreciate it. I think it'd be a nice thing to do. Yes, it's a nice gesture. I think it would be best if one of us were to act as a spokesman for the group. 
We'll all go, of course, but I think if I were to speak... Why you? Peavy was a pretty good friend of mine, Judge. Of mine, too, but I don't want to make the speech. Let Gildersleeve do it. He's good with women. Very well. If that's the will of the group, I merely thought that as a jurist and as Peavy's personal attorney... I'd like to remind you that it was me she called in the middle of the night. That's right. Me, not you, Judge, not his personal attorney, and not the police. She was too smart for that. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm going to get tired of you writing the department pretty soon. Pay no attention, Chief. Gildy, if you want to make the statement for the club, go ahead. If it means so much to you. All right, I'll make it. Is that settled? Well, if someone will put it in the form of a motion... All those in favor say aye. Aye. Let's do it now and get it over. We can still play a little poker. <laughs> I know Peavy. I've never been inside his house. I have. Got bit by Peavy's parrot. They got a parrot? Yeah, there's a parrot. We checked him the other night. Checked him for what? Just checked him. It's routine. <laughs> there's a light in the front room. I imagine that's where she's sitting. Is that her peeking out from behind the window shade? Very likely. She must have heard the car drive up. Well, we might as well go in. No use making her worry. I want to warn you, fellas, she's in a rather nervous state. So, we'll have to be just as tactful as possible. Just leave that to me, Judge. Who is it? Judge Mr. Gilder, I'll do the talking, Judge. Uh, the few friends of Mr. Peavy's, Mrs. Peavy, Mr. Gildersleeve, Judge Hooker, Chief Gates, and we wanted to... Hey, we... how about me? Huh? Uh, oh, yes, and Mr. Munson. Uh, we just wanted to see you uh, a minute. Yeah. Can I come in? What the... Oh, the parrot, huh? Good evening, Mrs. Peavy. Any news, Judge? No, no news, I'm sorry to say. You've heard nothing yourself? Not a word. I can't understand it. Polly, what a cracker! Ah, that's all the commotion. Well, say now, that bird's clever. He said, what's all the commotion? Mrs. Peavy, you know Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe. Yes, I know him. And Chief Gates? Oh, yes, yes. I had the pleasure the other night. Uh, <clears throat> that is, it wasn't exactly a pleasure under the circumstances, but uh, <clears throat> we've met. Do you know Mr. Munson? No. Well, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Peavy, I'm sure. I often heard Peavy speak of you. Holly, hold it, sir. Quiet, baby. Well, Mrs. Peavy... <laughs> We, uh... Uh, uh... I'll handle it, Judge. Uh, Mrs. Peavy, uh, we all happen to be members of the Jolly Boys Club, of which your late husband, uh, of which your husband was formerly a member. It still is a member, I mean. Uh, we shall always think of him as a member of our group. Indeed we shall. All right, Chief. Uh, we shall always think of Mr. Peavy as a member of our club. But we just thought, as an organization... We should call on you and state officially our profound regret and sorrow at his unexpected uh, uh, departure from Summerfield. And we just want to say that if there's anything we can do, why, we'd be glad, only too glad to do, do it. Uh, is that it, fellas? That's it. Uh, we didn't have anything particular in mind, Mrs. Peavy, just any little errands or... Uh... Maybe he left a suit at the cleaners. We could pick it up. <laughs> oh, Floyd, for... Our thought was simply to be helpful in any possible way during your time of sorrow, Mrs. Peavy. Yeah, that's it. I always knew no good had come of Richard hanging around that Jolly Boys Club. <laughs> There's only one night a week, Mrs. Peavy. Yes. If you could have seen the innocent pleasure your husband used to derive from our little games, Mrs. Peavy... I'm sure you'd feel different there. Yeah, that's right. Win or lose, he'd never get sore. Well, I remember one night he was having a terrible run of cards. He must have been out about six... Hey! What... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Munson is right. <laughs> Mr. Peavy never lost his temper or gloated. Never swore or used profane language. You should be proud of him. 
Well, he's gone now. Uh, <clears throat> we realize that, Mrs. Peavy, and that's why I we... I always knew no good had come out of that club. Put ideas into Richard's head. Oh, now, Mrs. Peavy, we never... Father, want a cracker! Father, want a cracker! Oh. Hush, baby. <laughs> Fellas, I, uh... <clears throat> I think we'd better go. Mrs. Peavy's been under quite a strain, and it probably tires her to stand around gassing with strangers. Uh, we just wanted to tell you that uh, if there's anything we can do... There isn't anything. Oh. Well, we just... Uh, uh, good night, Mrs. Peavy. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Peavy. Good night. Mrs. Peavy, before we go... I'm sure that we are all taking an unnecessarily pessimistic view of the situation. I'm sure that somewhere, at this very moment, Mr. Peavy is thinking of you, possibly making plans to return. After all, to him, you are the center of the universe, a lodestar, irresistibly drawing him home. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that bird knows something. Stick around, folks. Mr. Gildersleeve might hear something about Mr. Peavy. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. See if you don't prefer parquet margarine's fine, fresh flavor to any other brand, as millions do. It's true, every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for the margarine of Kraft quality. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. you like it, you love it, like millions who say. Their favorite margarine is Parquet. Parquet margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. Is that you, Aunt? Yes, it's me. Hey, look, you got a special delivery postcard from Mr. Peavy. Peavy? Well, sure enough. <laughs> Dear friend Gildersleeve, sorry to trouble you, but... Would you mind forwarding my light overcoat? Thanking you in advance, R. Peavy. Uh, P.S. You may tell Mrs. Peavy for me that when the parrot goes back to sleeping in his own room, she can reach me at General Delivery, Old Point Comfort, Virginia. <laughs> Good old Peavy. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Yeah, good night. Listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Here's a real pantry pal, a favorite cheese food that's just grand for all occasions. It's Pabstet, the delicious cheddar cheese food that spreads, slices, melts to smooth perfection. Serve it between meals and at parties as a tasty appetizer or sandwich spread. And at mealtime, enjoy Pabstet's mellow cheddar cheese flavor in omelets and souffles, and in smooth golden sauces for macaroni, egg, and chicken dishes. Buy both kinds for variety, golden cheddar and pimento. Ask for Pabstet. P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-double-T. Pabstet Cheese Food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.